Hey guys, it's Bird tonight. We're here to talk for a quick second about Jojo Siwa, and I also want to review some of Brittany Dawn's recent Instagram posts with you guys. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so as some of you might know, James Charles just launched his beauty brand Painted and he's got some products coming out or whatever. I don't care. I don't care about his brand, his products, if they're good, bad, indifferent. I don't care about any of that. But I was over on the Colleen Ballinger subreddit and they showed where James was with Jojo Siwa. What my assumption is is that he was dropping off his product to her because it just recently launched. She shared it, I believe, on Snapchat. The entire idea of anyone aligning themselves and posting content that they're hanging out with James Charles is appalling to me. And the reason that it's interesting when it comes to JoJo is because right now people are asking her like, hmm, you were very close with Colleen Ballinger and Rachel Ballinger when you were under the age of 18. I think a lot of people have a lot of questions that she might be able to answer, but we can't force her to answer anything. It's on her time, all of that. But how interesting that nothing is being said about Colleen but we're going on vacations with Rachel Ballinger and having James Charles drop off PR in person. I think it's very interesting. Some of these creators that align with one another, it makes me question if, like, do they even care? Because for me, in my real life, I don't hang out with or associate with people that are awful individuals. And it's public knowledge that they're awful individuals. I will sever friendships. Like if you're being weird with kids, if you're being weird with minors, and we've been friends for five years, sorry, like, bye. Because that's just weird to me. I don't associate with people that are creepy. And maybe that's having a little bit of a harsh stance on this, but I want nothing to do with adults that have inappropriate conversations with children. So a lot of people were over on Reddit talking about that. What do you guys think about Jojo Siwa? Do you think that she should share her experience with Colleen? Do you think that her still hanging out with Rachel Ballinger is weird. Like, what do you guys think about that? I'm going to link the other video that I did specifically about Colleen and Jojo's friendship down below because I talked about it at length in that video. But it's just very strange. Like, James Charles, I, he is one of those people, like, please sign off the internet and never come back. That's how I feel about James. Now let's move on to Miss Brittany Dawn. Brittany Dawn is over here posting on Instagram things like having fun doesn't have to be linked with sin. I remember the transition when I first came to know Jesus, the questions of, well, if I give up this life, life will feel boring. And oh, how wrong I was. I feel more alive now without the alcohol, without the clubs, without partying than I did when I was choosing to dance with sin. There is so much life to be found in Christ. When, when say, when say yes to eternity and no to temporary satisfaction, here's your reminder that having fun doesn't require giving in to your flesh. When I talk about her being judgmental towards other people and directly or indirectly telling her followers, you should do this in order to be a better person. Or if you are doing that, you are not being a good person. 
And some people will say, oh, I think you're looking into it too much. This post encapsulates the judgment that she puts down on people. Telling people that they're dancing with sin for simply going to a party or responsibly consuming alcohol. Like, who are you to literally tell people that they are not being what you think they should be simply because they go to a party and they have a couple drinks. People have all kinds of different outlets, okay? Some people like to go to a new bar at the end of the week or once a month to try their special drink menu or whatever. And if that is keeping them happy and able to get through life, as long as there's no issues with drinking and driving or addiction, obviously I'm not here to co-sign those things. Um, but what on earth? Like, why are we so, when I tell you that some, and hear this loudly, I am not saying all, but I am saying some Christians like Brittany Dawn will come on their platform and just be the most judgmental people and sit there and say, oh, but we're not judging. Your entire platform is judging other people for doing things that you have deemed bad because of the Bible. And she's over here flaunting her um, marriage with Jordan saying, wait for the one who takes you to church, not bed, who leads you to Christ, not sin, who buys you flowers, not plan B, who prays for you, never pressures you, who encourages you, never belittles you, who leads you to repentance, not corn. If he doesn't lead you to Jesus, he shouldn't lead you in life. Um, I actually don't think that anyone should be led by anyone else. I think that it should be a two-way street. Some days I'm leading, some days you're leading. Because we pick up the slack for one another. I am not ever going to simply sit there and allow someone to just lead me fully through life. Because some days I might make better decisions and some days you might make better decisions. And that's what a... Um, that's what a healthy relationship is. And, you know, again, it, it's the shaming. It's the shaming of, you know, this whole like corn conversation, you guys, like, I, I don't know, like some of these couples who sit here and act like this on social media are the ones who are literally having affairs and just, not doing any of the things that they're saying they're doing on social media. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, they said they were happily married. And then you find out that one of them is, you know, sneaking off with somebody else and having an affair. And it's all just pff, ridiculous. So now she is using, this is very funny to me. She's using a Trisha Paytas audio clip. And she puts this video and says, when the government announces aliens exist, but you're a Christian and you know they're actually just demons, that it's a cover up for when Jesus returns and that he doesn't, and that it doesn't change the fact that he is still king. Um, someone left a, a comment here. So you believe in magical Dumbledore in the sky, but not aliens. Oh, haha. Ha. Okay. The funny thing is, is like the, the people that are actually not surprised about this aliens conversation, it, it's because it's really not that surprising. I mean, it, it shouldn't be surprising to, to anyone who is an adult. It shouldn't be surprising. Now we need to get into the Jason Aldean conversation. She put a post that says, imagine getting more upset about a Jason Aldean song than human trafficking, children being used for X, corrupt government, the USDA approving lab grown meat, pedo agendas, men trying to get pregnant and aborted babies being celebrated. This is an argument that a lot of people try to come out with. 
people are allowed to be upset with multiple things at one time. Jason Aldean, wrong. Human trafficking, wrong. You know what bothers me most about the Jason Aldean situation? It's the insincerity of his response and the blatant ignorance that accompanied it. So if you don't know, Jason Aldean is a country singer who put out a music video called Try That in a Small Town. It's basically an anti-protester, pro-cop anthem. It starts out innocently enough, castigating anyone who thinks they can get away with robbing and carjacking people in a small town. Fine, don't do bad things in my neighborhood because we look out for our own, great. But by the second stanza, he's moved on to scolding people who disrespect cops and burn flags. So we shifted from describing behavior that's blatantly harmful to other human beings to behavior that's merely associated with people who don't share his political viewpoints. From here on, the whole timber of the song shifts to a brazenly nationalistic, chest-thumping repudiation of people who would vaguely be described as woke, I'm sure. After that, he starts to make outright threats. See how far you make it down the road. Then he starts making false claims that they are coming for his guns. He goes on to describe the good old boys who were poised and ready for a fight. The songwriters are Kelly Lovelace, Nell Thrasher, Tully Kennedy, and Kurt Michael Allison, by the way. Some of Nashville's finest, I'm sure. The video, which was released on Friday, is even more egregious than the song itself. CMT had to pull it because there were so many complaints. It contains nonstop news footage of protesters being depicted as merely violent antisocial agitators making lewd gestures at cops and throwing Molotov cocktails at buildings, a reinforcement of right-wing messaging. And the whole thing is overlaid, of course, with giant, wholesome wheat fields where the good guys hang out, and the American flag is perpetually blowing in the wind. At one point, the video depicts protesters being assaulted by police in riot gear, and one scene even shows protesters being mowed down by a police car. It's a veritable right-wing wet dream. And then you have Aldine and his band trying their best to look like superheroes outside the Maury County Courthouse. The problem is that this courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee, has a history of some horrible racial violence dating all the way back to 1927. A white woman accused an 18-year-old black man named Henry Choate of attacking her. He was immediately arrested and placed in the county jail. A white mob then descended on the jail and attacked him. He was bashed in the head repeatedly with a hammer and killed him. After that, the white mob tied him to a truck and dragged him to the Maury County Courthouse in Aldine's video and hung his body there for the whole town to witness. Then in 1946, a black Navy vet got into an altercation with a white shopkeeper. A white mob gathered at the Maury County Courthouse in Aldine's video to threaten the black community. A group of black citizens then gathered in the black business district known as Mink Sly to provide self-defense. Columbia officers then decided to descend on the Mink Sly neighborhood. The crowd warned them to back off, but when they didn't, four police officers were shot and wounded. As retaliation, the Tennessee State Highway Patrol, along with a mob of white citizens, descended on the Mink Sly district and completely vandalized it. They randomly fired into buildings, stole cash and belongings, raided homes, and took all of the guns that they could find from black homes and businesses, about 300 in total. They arrested over 100 black people and refused to allow them bail or legal counsel. Police later shot and killed two black detainees in the jail and injured a third after claiming that they tried to steal their guns. Now, did Jason Aldean or his band or any of the production crew know about the horrible racial history that this courthouse represented? I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think it's highly unlikely that they did. But that's the issue. They didn't know because they were so myopically focused on their own worldview that any outside perspective wouldn't have had the chance of getting through. Let's not forget that the Klan was started in one of these quaint Tennessee small towns. It's pretty obvious from Aldean's history on race that he isn't exactly hanging out with people that will introduce him to inconvenient truths about these small towns that he loves celebrating. I mean, this is a dude that was wearing blackface as recently as 2015. He's worn clothing containing Confederate flag imagery and has even sold Confederate flag clothing as a part of his official tour merchandise. Aldine, who's a survivor of the horrific 2019 Las Vegas shooting, seems shocked, I tell you, shocked, that the video might have come across as pro looking He claims that there were no racial overtones whatsoever, and then he spun the whole thing this way. Try that in the small town for me refers to the feeling of a community that I had growing up where we took care of our neighbors regardless of differences of background or belief. I'm sorry, I must have missed that messaging. I was too busy listening to you make very thinly veiled threats of violence towards anyone who protested police brutality or burned a flag as a political statement. There is such a disconnect between the message that Jason Aldean is putting out there and how he wants to be perceived. And this is the history of soft bigotry and racism in this country. Oh, we're not anti-black. Nothing in that song or video specifically targeted black people, but it didn't have to. 
He could say and show just enough to get him right up to the line without crossing it, maybe even in his own mind. But looming right there behind him is a not-so-subtle reminder that America's messed up history with race is always present and is unconsciously providing all of the subtext necessary to expose the soft bigotry and racial violence that it refuses to confront. The thing that I, one of the things that really stuck out to me here is like, why do you care who is pregnant? Why do you care? What business is it of Brittany Dawn's who is having children? I think these people that like constantly compare evils is like, they're just the type of people you can't have a conversation with point blank period. So just people you simply can't have a conversation with. They are not people who um, are, are even willing to look past their own beliefs and actually look at the facts. Like, I don't know, whatever. Bernie Dawn seems to be really wanting to dip her toe into just not only being an awful person, but also announcing how awful she is and using the Bible and religion as a way to justify being a piece of garbage. So that's how I feel about her. Fundy Fridays just did a Brittany Dawn update. I'll find a link and put it for you guys down below. In case you don't follow Jen, go follow Jen. She is absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, I figured we would check in on Brittany Dawn for just a couple of minutes and chat about JoJo. So drop all your thoughts down below. For now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.